Dead or Alive 6 is just around the corner, and things have changed a lot since the initial reveal. With the return of the series' famed jiggle physics and absurdly sexy costumes, DOA 6 has pretty much taken a complete 180 on the early promises made during its debut. Despite more recent efforts to be taken more seriously as a fighting game, Dead or Alive just can't escape its infamy as shameless fanservice. But if you clicked on this video, you know that I'm not here to talk about DOA 6. We're going to be talking about Girl Fight, a blatant DOA clone developed by Kung Fu Factory and published by Majesco in 2013. This is literally all I can tell you about the development end of it because there is no Girl Fight website and it doesn't even have a Wikipedia page. This is a game literally forgotten by time. So why are we even looking at this forgotten piece of gaming debris? Because Girl Fight is probably the worst shameless titty game I've ever seen. From what I could parse of the story, Girl Fight is a sci-fi fighting game where hot girls of varying backgrounds are abducted by the mysterious Foundation, and then hooked up to a VR simulation and made to fight each other in order to develop psychic powers. The girl fighters range from a decorated military veteran, a blind ninja, a world-leading scientist, and whatever the fuck this is. My immediate problem is that all of these characters are basically wearing fetish stripper costumes. Actually, scratch that. All these characters are fetish strippers. The costumes are tacky in the way that Halloween store sexy gimmick costumes are, like sexy military chick, or sexy samurai. And some of these costumes don't appear to have a gimmick at all. Theoretically, you could say the same for any of the DOA girls, but at the very least you could infer that their clothing styles better express their personalities, fashion sense, or at least complements their fighting style. The few who do dress like actual strippers are Tina and La Mariposa, who are both wrestlers and dress flashy for the sake of entertainment, and Christy in this DOA 4 costume who was an actual stripper in that game, so at least she's honest? And we're just talking about default costumes, not any of the crazy unlockable fetish costumes. At least in DOA, the fetish costumes are an option and not the primary look. If you need more proof that the girl fight costumes are tacky and thoughtless, then let me direct you to the character select. The character art depicts the girl fighters carrying a large array of weapons, and none of these weapons are represented in-game, nor do they help to define who these characters are, except that two of the girls are Japanese because they've got katanas. Obviously. It really comes off as an afterthought that these girls need to try really hard to appear dangerous and sexy. Like the props will somehow compensate for how bland they are. These designs are not interesting, fun, nor evocative of anything. They're just... tasteless. Say what you will about the girls of DOA, at their worst they're two-dimensional. But the cast of Girl Fight is zero-dimensional. None of these characters have any personality or sense of expression. Not in their intros or win poses, not in their artworks, and especially not in their voice lines, because there are none. There is not a single line of spoken dialogue from any of the Girl Fighters, and the very few voices that you do hear from them barely even fit the character. There are no two characters who have any sort of interaction other than fighting, so there is nothing to actually learn about the girl fighters when they are paired off in the ring, which is arguably where a fighting game character needs to be the most expressive. This is most evident when I tried to examine their fighting styles, and found that they practically have none. There only appear to be two character speeds in the game, which is either fast or not fast. But aside from that, there was barely anything about these animations or moves that seemed to distinguish one girl from another. Even though technically there are new animations on each girl, they all just feel the same in practice. None of these movesets have any signature strengths, specialties, or offer any unique playstyles or mechanics. By comparison, the girls in DOA not only offer a wide variety of fighting styles, but each one is tailored to express their personality and flair. Hitomi's karate is hard-hitting and straightforward. Ayani's ninjutsu is deceptive and lightning fast. Leifang's tai chi kwan is graceful and patient. Lisa's lucha libre is acrobatic and flashy. 
I can't think of a single girl in Girl Fight who has a defined playstyle because they all do the same things. And for all the rest of Girl Fight's many flaws, being unable to distinguish even a single character through gameplay is the worst mistake you could ever make as a fighting game. But allow me to address an important question that no one is asking. Does Girl Fight have lore? Well, yes and no. The arcade mode offers a standard ladder of foes before facing the final boss. Initially, only Warchild is playable and each other character is unlocked one by one. Seeing each arcade mode story for this review meant I had to clear the game with every single character, which more than likely makes me the only person on YouTube who has played this game story to its entirety. That said, the story comes together in a way that somehow hard confirms my previous point that these girls don't possess a single shred of personality. Before each round, you receive narration that begins questioning each character's motivation, attempting to turn them against the Foundation, and ultimately leading them to face the final boss, Chrome. While the questions themselves attempt to form a vague narrative of each character's past and the circumstances that have led them to this virtual catfight, there are no cutscenes or dialogue of these characters actually taking action or making decisions. All of their stories are told to them, and all the characters are just assumed to be following instruction and joining with the narrator's cause in order to achieve their personal goals. At the conclusion of each story, you're awarded with this awkwardly placed sexy pinup drawing, presumably because the game is trying to distract you from the fact that no plot just occurred, before playing a cutscene of your girl fighter of choice, presumably waking up from VR land, even though it's the same cutscene and the same eyeball for every single character. Each arcade path plays out exactly the same until you finally play as Chrome, the final boss who was revealed to have been the voice all along. Chrome is technically the only self-acting character, and also the only character with spoken dialogue, even though her narration voice and her in-game voice don't appear to match? Humans do not govern themselves effectively. I can provide humanity with far more effective leadership. <laughs> Chrome is also the only character whose story comes to a logical close, as her narration reveals her goal of choosing one of the other seven girl fighters as a host body to assimilate her virtual form as her own. Even Chrome's sexy pinup shows her manifesting a body in the real world. The ending zoom out cutscene is thus implied to be each girl fighter waking up from VR, but as Chrome's new host. Technically, this means that no matter who you played as previously, Chrome wins by assimilating their body. No, I'm not against endings where the villain wins, but there's no reward in that kind of twist when the girl fighters have shown no resistance nor empathy towards Chrome's goals. Like lifeless dolls, they just go from fight to fight until they walk right into the villain's hands, all the while rewarding the player with random sexy pinup drawings along the way. I know fighting games aren't the best when it comes to storytelling, but at the very least your average fighting game can establish who their characters are and why they're fighting. But the ride doesn't stop just yet. Girl Fight also offers a library of full unlockable lore and biographies for every character, and yes I unlocked and read every single one of them because I hate myself. Each girl fighter comes with upwards of 8 files, documenting various reports and tests of the girls before and after their time as test subjects. I'm not going to go over every single one because no one deserves that, but I did discover two very concerning facts about the written bios. The first is that each girl fighter except Chrome is stated to be suffering from some kind of mental instability or some form of trauma. Warchild and Ghost seem to have PTSD from their military careers. Wrench and Viper are both physically disabled and resort to crippling depression and delusions, respectively, to cope with their trauma. Shogun and Daisy suffer from megalomania and narcissism, and Chaos is just a psychopath. The bios attempt to paint a hard history for each character and how their developing psychic powers and the sabotage by the Foundation have been central to their lives and hardships, and then expects us to believe that each girl chooses to manifest their virtual avatar as a fetish stripper. Daisy is supposed to be a corporate CEO, but chooses to manifest in the virtual mind prison as a cowgirl stripper for some reason. When you compound this with the fact that the girls show no personality in game and that all the extra pinup drawings do nothing except show each character just being sexy, 
it starts to feel like the writing, character design, and animation have shit all to do with each other. It's just like Ivy's narrative dissonance problem, except times eight. Welcome to Sexy Trauma Victims, the fighting game. Here's Wrench looking pretty sexy, posing next to that machine that forcefully amputated all her limbs. The second problem is that the bio state in rather specific detail that each girl fighter has a unique psychic ability. Wrench can mentally deconstruct any mechanical item she sees. Viper has 360 degrees of perfect spatial awareness despite being blind. Daisy can read people's minds and emotions. Shogun has some kind of electromagnetic force field that renders her virtually immune to all weapons. Despite these powers forming the core of each girl's history and psychosis, none of them are represented in the game at all. The game even has a system for using psychic powers, but the ones you do get to use are picked from a pool of generic powers that every girl can choose. How does one go through the trouble of crafting an entire world setting to justify hot chicks with psychic powers fighting each other, and then not capitalize on that concept by not designing your characters with these powers in mind? Like, Shogun is supposed to have a force field, remember? But in-game, she has a teleport! What? This is literally set up to diversify your cast with unique movesets and abilities, and Girl Fight somehow drops the ball on it. Look, you're probably thinking, even without this extensive analysis, it should come as no surprise that Girl Fight is a really shitty game. The fact that it's even called Girl Fight and not something like Project Athena, which would make it plot relevant, means that the game has no identity nor intent to be anything cohesive. The disparate elements of Girl Fight come together in a way that make the game far more worse beneath the surface than one expects of a shovelware titty fighter. The tacky designs have no reason, personality, or thought other than to fetishize girls who are defined solely by their past traumas or mental instabilities. The gameplay fails to individualize the girls by ignoring their provided lore or by failing to embody any sort of personality or style. The story then tosses these girls into a plot in which they have no agency except to be used by a perpetrator who is neither contested nor agreed upon. It actually reminds me of a 2011 Zack Snyder film called Sucker Punch, a film that also attempted to blend sexy action babes with a multi-tiered narrative that failed to characterize any of its cover girls, and for some reason also featured fetishized mental trauma victims. If you've made it this far in the video, Congratulations, and thank you for taking this dive with me. Hopefully, next time you think about what a bad titty fighting game is actually like, you think of Girl Fight. At least DOA sticks to its core values. That wraps up today's avatorial. If you enjoyed this video for some reason, be sure to hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell for more anime and game content from Sugar Punch. Our channel is supported entirely on Patreon so we can keep our videos ad-free. I'm ABI, and I regret everything. But most of all, I regret that the $10 I spent on this game could have been used to buy a delicious burrito for lunch, and I would have had a better time than the three afternoons I spent recording Girl Fight.